All right, we're fortunate enough to be working with our preserved and plastinated cadaver specimens, and I always like to take a minute to remember these individuals, particular individuals who donated their bodies, and really over the years and decades, all the individuals have, do have donated their bodies for us to come to have such an amazing understanding of our own anatomy and physiology. In the link below, you can see more about donating your body and about the process of plastination. So just to get oriented, let's start with the skeleton. We're gonna be looking at the muscles of the posterior compartment of the upper limb. And so remember what we're talking about on the skeleton is gonna be the muscles going down the posterior aspect of the upper limb. And the nerves that supply those muscles and all of the upper limb are gonna take their origin from the spinal nerves in the cervical region, right? coming across forming that brachial plexus that goes under the clavicle and then sends those nerves down the upper limb. And so on our cadaver, again, you can really nicely see in the neck region, all of these nerves coming off of the spinal cord, the spinal nerves. Uh, there's our clavicle across the front. You can see some of them go directly to the shoulder muscles and then most of those nerves pass deep or under the clavicle and emerge in this region as the brachial plexus. If we come now to our isolated upper limb, what I want to indicate is there's the clavicle that's been cut, there's the brachial plexus emerging from under the clavicle, and what we're really interested in now is not the nerves across to the front of the upper limb, but this big nerve coming posteriorly behind the big brachial or subclavian and brachial artery. This big nerve is the posterior that's the posterior cord of the brachial plexus, and it continues just kind of one of those streets that changes its name along the way. It continues as the radial nerve, so it's going to be on kind of eventually come out on the thumb or radial side and dives into the posterior part of the upper limb. And nicely, you can see how they show us that nerve continuing as it emerges on the posterior side right here, emerging through the triceps muscle. As it goes down, it's going to go it's going to provide neurons to the tricep muscle to activate the tricep muscle to extend at your elbow. And then you can see the nerve continues on into all of these. Um, if you're looking, we're now on the posterior. See, that's the posterior part of the upper limb. If you compare it to my arm, and we can see that nerve coming into this entire group of what we call wrist and digital extensors. Again, these are broken down into the wrist extensors, the carpal and radial extensors of the wrist on either side. And we're just not gonna worry about all those individual muscles and know them as the wrist and digital extensors, okay? So a real quick recap, we're looking at the brachial plexus emerging from under the clavicle. The posterior component is really just the posterior cord in here, which dives in through the triceps muscle, emerges on the other side, supplying innervation to the triceps muscle, those neurons to the tricep muscle, and then continuing on down to the wrist and digital extensors that have their tendons going really all the way to the very distal phalanx in order to extend the entire wrist and also the digits. That's the muscles of the posterior compartment of the upper limb.